Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Hi. How are you? That's one of the things that I want to start with today. You know what? Because so many of us start speaking without asking asking how you are doing, how you are feeling. I mean, truly feeling. Because with everything that is going on, I have all the way from phone calls, from Facebook, from Instagram, we just get on and it's as if we just share the things we want to without asking how the other person is. So today, I want to know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Because what we are going to be talking about, and before I even go further, I want to know, um, how is my volume? I just started with a new microphone, and I want to know, uh, do you hear me well? If you are here, if you are present, by all means, uh, give me an emoji, say something. Um, uh, just say, I am present, I am here. Uh, let me know either with emojis or uh, make a comment so I know you are here and my voice is clear and that you can hear anyone here anybody here okay uh, I had to turn you up a little bit pretty good okay wonderful so I will turn myself up and see if this is better um, anyhow this is Lisa oh my god I have something exciting to share one of the exciting things I like to share is to say that hmm, today's program is going to be about something that was very emotional. And the exciting thing is that last week we were talking about, um, about how to manifest how to release and I got one person who was viewing who texted me messaged me actually and then connected me outside outside of Facebook outside of this beautiful box that we connect with each other so she came in and in one session within two hours of deep work she walked out of here as if the whole world changed for her and you know what it was it was about letting go letting go of the things she was holding on to because last week we talked about just holding on to the cord and everything and it was very shallow so today I want to talk about what it is about each and every one of us and I want to share about my own how I held on to some uh, beliefs that I thought it was a reality because the person who said it it made such an impact in my life and because of that impact that it made in my life it changed my course so what happened was she came in because she felt so overweight and burdened and feeling as if no matter what she does she can't lose the weight so I know I have shared this I know we've talked about the burdens the weight that we hold on to and the things that we eat and thinking that that hole is empty and it's constantly no matter what happened whatever you eat or not eat that yo-yo weight so we talked about one thing what's weighing you down versus what is it that you weigh and that's what we started doing is peeling away all the things that she felt burdened with 
and feel, felt that weighs her down. It was energetic. It was. So one of the things that came out of that, and we both sat down and cried and cried, was, yes, believe it or not, I do cry. Sometimes I cry with my clients. Sometimes I cry after they leave because it impacts me when they find their own transformation when they feel the light bulb go on and transform so for her it was something that occurred when she was seven years old prime time as a child when she was impacted of listening and hearing one thing and then she held on to that message that message that was given to her, not directly, but it was given to her brother. And through all her life, she made a promise that she was going to protect and make sure that nothing happens to her brother because her brother was disabled. And, and what happened was someone... Uh, they were sitting in the kitchen and one of the family members said something that it was very derogatory and hurtful to her mom and it was about her brother. So this seven-year-old kid makes a decision that although her brother was five years older than her to never ever allow anyone, anyone make a comment like that and to protect her brother from even family members. So that burden became so cumbersome for her that she made sure that no matter where her brother was, no matter what mom was doing, she took it upon herself to be the guardian of her, fa uh, of her brother. Now, that seven-year-old child did not know what was happening, but throughout the years, she put on the weight and weight and weight so she can help her mom carry her brother up the stairs to carry her brother into the wheelchair into the car now when she realized that that she had held on to approximately 70 pounds and the promise that she made to herself boom so the work was first and foremost evoking it you know through hypnotherapy we peel away by first recognizing acknowledging and it is through hypnosis that we can tap into deeper deeper levels not the conscious level, but deeper levels. And I can ask you if there are things that perhaps a pattern that you have created, a habit that you have, that you perhaps have not let go of, not realizing you're holding on to. Because sometimes the things that we do, the things that you do, it is not so shallow but more cause related. So I would like to share what mine was. Mine was something so similar to that. And I remember, and I did this work after I cried with her and we did it, allow me to go back and say, the process was to acknowledge it. Once she acknowledged it, acknowledged it, it was me asking if this adult self of hers right here, right now, could truly embrace all of her, which means if she could embrace this incredible body of hers, that she had gained all this weight, that it was for a reason and make peace instead of hating, hating her body disliking herself every time she looked in the mirror being so angry with herself even though she ate very little but she could not lose the weight 
So recognizing that loss, she had done so much of that yo-yo. And it's that exact yo-yo that it was like every time she would lose the weight, she would gain it. Because it's that little girl, the seven-year-old would say, you know what? We can't. We can't lose the weight. Because if I lose the weight, I won't be able to safeguard. I won't be able to help mom. I won't be able to help my brother. I need this extra strength, extra weight to be able to carry. Now, once we do that work, once she did that recognition to embrace who she is and where she is today with her body, that's the time that she realized she can do the transformation. Now, for the transformation, it's going to take some time because it's not like magic. The, the light bulb went on as a magic. For her to embrace that essence of her seven-year-old is the magic. To sit with that seven-year-old and say, oh, now I realize the promise and I love you for that. I love you, kiddo. I love you. I love you for who you are. And I truly love my body. And because of this, now the work begins. So, mine was so much the same. And I will give you the exact process of how it affected. Mine was when I was 11 years old and I recall being in my bedroom and we had guests and one of the guests that we had was this person that I was looking up to so much, like a brother figure. And him and so many others were in the house and I remember my mom was so excited to share that Lisa writes poetry. Lisa has been writing poems and poetry since she was a young girl. And she asked me to go and bring that journaling that I used to do, the poems that I used to write. Yes, and I started writing since I was a kid and I used to write it in Farsi and I have this incredible big booklet. And every poetry that I would write, I would go and find pictures that would match it. No wonder it's all about visualization. So I would visualize exactly that picture and then bring it and match my poetry and the poem with that picture. And that's called matching. That's called visualizing, writing, expressing, and then stepping into it. That's exactly what hypnosis is. And until this very moment, I didn't realize what I was doing. Believe it or not, I just put it all together. Okay, and that's the amazing part. You know, sometimes when light bulb goes on, it goes on for all of us. It goes on not only for you, but for me. And I want to ask you exactly exactly this have you done things that you did not recognize that it was magical it was creative that if you look at it and say huh where was my passion what is that that I did then because if I were to ask you what is your inner child doing saying expressing and how did you what is it that you wanted to be when you grew up? I want to check and see, are you doing something that you are, you are as passionate as if you were a child? So, back to mine. My mom was so proud of it. I bring it and she reads this entire thing. And there was about five people there. And I was sitting there like a little bit shy and yet beaming because it was to be read. And he read it and looked at my mom, looked at me and said, 
please, I want to make sure that you stop writing this. And my mom looked at him and said, why? He says, because this is not something for a child to write. Those are all very deeply poetries. They are so deep. They are very romantic. They are deep. And this is not the way it needs to be. Please. And looked at me and took that entire journal, closed it, put it aside and said, Lisa, stop writing. You, you need to go and do something else. And this is not the way for you to express. And believe it or not, for years and years, something that I was so proud of, I stopped. I stopped writing. I stopped creating. I stopped being me. So that part of the little girl that learned how to express her feelings of pain her feelings of sadness, her feelings, her outlet. Her outlet got shut down. So today, as I am speaking right here, right now, and when I express, when I write, when I express and I get shushed, it makes an impact. It becomes a trigger. I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now because I just remembered another trigger. So we all have a trigger. We all have an insecurity. You have it. I have it. There is no perfection. So I may look good at something else and yet I see my weakness in something else. So the ones who come to me is because I can hone in to their gift. I can hone in to, through the work that I do, through evoking it, through embracing, so that you can go to the next level and evolve in your gifts. I can probably hone into your gifts and until this very new moment, I didn't realize another trigger that had just come to me that when that trigger goes, I feel this small. So this small because my voice was shut down. So that means there is something more to do. This inner child of mine may also need the work as I am sharing with you. I am growing with you. Every time we do one growth, we realize we just opened. We opened who we are. And that is your gift. So someone needs a coach. Someone needs a therapist. Someone needs a mentor. Someone may just pick up an audio recording and that makes an impact. And I know everyone has one way. So you can be kinesthetic to someone who can touch you and make that impact. It can be auditory that you can hear one thing and then say, wow, what is it that I have not let go? Is it something that was said to me? It is something that I felt that to this day I'm not letting go? Is it because if I let go of this weight, I will think that I am not able to safeguard my brother, to be there to help my mom? that my brother thought of me as his safety net and realizing that part and tears that started flowing by loving herself and recognizing I can become thin and become thinner and become stronger and build my muscle that I can also do the same thing 
and love myself and appreciate myself and accept myself far more deeper than me standing in front of the mirror and not liking myself. That in itself was the light bulb that made the impact for her. I can do all that and love myself and like myself and be happier with who I am. And by merging, empowering that little girl and merging who she is today and letting go of that misperception is the exact therapy, is exact pill, it's exact message that she needed to give to herself. And I hope this makes sense to you. I hope that if this is something that you can resonate with, by all means, let me know. Just send an emoji, say hello. Hello, Adrian. Oh, perfect. You are here. Are you still here? Uh, I just wanted to know if... Um, so, if that makes a message, that's what I do. I help you peel away that kind of uh, messages to peel away layers and layers of misconceptions. So, here is the things that we do. In life, we let go of frustrations. So by letting go of frustrations with yourself, I want you to learn a new skill, a new perception. Instead of dwelling on what is, I want you to master the things that happened and master letting go. So change your perception is another way. So see the root cause, find it, locate it, by evoking it, embrace this very moment and bless, bless it. So see the root cause as a blessing in disguise because as I've said many, many times, our body is there to protect. It's not there to, okay, it becomes a nuisance, yes, but it's not body's fault. It is you that ate it, you that held on to it either emotionally, physically, or mentally. So you can even cry it out, truly, by crying it. Make a list. Another thing you can do is make a list of all the accomplishments, all the things that you believe you have been holding on to something. And why is it that you won't let go? Because once you let go, you think, you are letting go of the success that you are. You are letting go of the reasons you are holding on to. And it, it can be a habit. It can be weight. It can be uh, whatever it is, a behavior. If you let go of that behavior, what will happen to you? You see, so many who want to become thinner or even the ones who are so thin want to gain it. I... I, my first question is, why? Why do you want to be thinner? Your why has to be far greater than getting there. Getting there is the secondary. You can get there real fast, but it's knowing why. And your why has to be for something that gives you joy. Not hardship your why I want to become thinner because I really want to fit in a size 8 dress I want my why so many weight they drop the weight they shed all that weight because they want to go to a wedding they want to look good they are starting to date and they start taking care of themselves so summer is coming they want to be in a bikini or they want to exercise they want to look good for someone else that is temporary because the white is from the outside and that's when the yo-yo starts but if your why becomes something for you just like the success if your goal your why is i want 
to be so successful that because of my success, I can write a $100,000 check or a $10,000 check to make a difference at for another person so that I can travel and make a difference, make an impact in someone else's life, that I can donate to my church for a cause. That is why I want to be successful. And the same success is personal. I want to be with someone because I want my life to enhance. I want to enhance my life. I want to enhance everywhere that I go. And that why, just like that little girl's why, for holding on to the weight so she can have the strength to help her mom with her brother. The why of dropping the weight has to be as strong. It has to be as powerful, as meaningful, as joyful, so that you can stand up and say, yes, that is why I want to do this. So visualize a box, just visualize a box in your, hell, uh, in your mind with expectations. And whenever you start dwelling on how things should be or should have been, could have, and all that, create a shelf and with all your thoughts and put all the should have, could have, would have in that box. Hmm? Just like the box that we put the coins in there and becomes that, you know, you gather all the coins and at the end, once it becomes so heavy with all that, you go and dump it. That's it. You can tr truly dump all the should have, could have, would have. And instead of should have, if you could just shift your mindset, your word and say, I would like to. I would like to. That means should is already in the past and we can't go back and say, I would like to. That means now I am giving myself permission to do this. It feels better. It's lighter. Go ahead and try it. Try and instead of trying it, just do it. That's it. Just do it. Just take pen and pencil. Or a pencil. Not pen and pencil. A pen or a pencil. Or even your phone. And just write there. All the things that you said. I should. I should. Should have. I could have. Because now you're saying. I blame myself for the things I didn't. And when we blame, what's going to happen after a blame? By all means, there's going to be a judgment and a punishment. Because I'm blaming. And when we blame someone, that means they did something wrong. So when we say, I should have and I could have, who's hearing it? You are. You're the first person. It's that inner voice of yours that is already criticizing and critiquing very ridiculing you should have done it and you didn't you know what you just lost your opportunity and instead of that I would like to do this go ahead you would like to when and when we give ourselves the permission I would like to do this and I am going to do this then I am making an announcement. I can. In order for us to I can. You can do this. Either by yourself. Get a mentor. Get an accountability friend. That keeps you on track. Because you, once you let go of something. And you want to bring something new. You need to have an accountability. 
and it can be a friend it can be a colleague it can be uh, a family member that you trust is going to lovingly and kindly keep you accountable and just say I just want to remind you are you still on track with what it is that you said I would like to and I am doing so engage in a physical activity so to let go of something I want you to remind yourself the identify what the experience thought you what you learned and what it is that you want to create and experience today so if it is letting go of eating sugar if it is doing an intermittent uh, dieting like after five o'clock for 14 hours or 16 hours I'm not gonna put anything solid in my body so we give the body a rest from grinding and eating and chewing you know even if you did that once a week it will be good for you it's called giving the body something different that you had not done before and in that box you can also put the things that you are ready to let go perceptions behaviors habits words that you used to talk to yourself and now what word can you replace it with that helps you move forward feel good and empowers you so visualize an empowered you step into that just like how I did I used to write the poetry visualize it find the picture match it that's exactly what we are doing express it visualize and that will become your new way of being so you can even put the numbers find the pants or skirt or that image that you want put that in front of you go to shop and get a shop only two sizes smaller than you are and look at it hang it in there and let your body see that's what I want to fit in and just let it go and those are the small little things I want you to do for yourself and then come and let me know how it is what are your results and by all means everything I do is for me to help you make a difference in your life why because one person made an impact in my life and it was through that healing that I am here today so everyone who comes into your life either they come in passing or they are in your life presently or it is something that you hear listen how is that helping you and if that energy is negative by all means let it go just let it go you can either let go of that energy or walk away with that person from that person so feel it fully if you start crying cry it all out shed it release it and it's okay for you to express it because sometimes letting go is not easy but you must let it go to make room for what you want and with that I want to say what about when you feel like the weight is no longer needed if you were using it to protect yourself and don't need the protection anymore exactly that's what we are talking about like that client she no longer needed to have all that weight because she has grown up and she is more able she is stronger 
and she no longer needs to hold on to that weight because she's not seven she can truly do it she has been doing it but it is that little girl thinking that I need the weight because for her she needed the weight as the person that she is at age 31 she does not need that extra weight she is so able to do that I hope that answers your question so today's message was recognizing that it's okay for you to let go it is okay for you to shed emotional physical weight and it's also okay for you to go back in your own heart in your body only here to embrace all that there is and say thank you thank you no more should ofs I'd like to I give myself permission to let it go this is Lisa I hope today's message was beneficial to you you can always find me on YouTube and we are going to start going live on Instagram if you are following me on Instagram by all means you can follow me on Instagram on Lisa Bubari you can find me even at Clubhouse with the same name I also have heal within in Clubhouse and we go I go live Monday nights and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and we talk about a lot of this kind of a thing about the things that truly matter and if you are not here and you've missed me on Facebook you can find me on Instagram or Clubhouse or you can always call me let's schedule a consultation let's do a discovery call because my mission is to empower you for you to stand up for who you are and be happy truly happy be happy with your feelings your body yourself my name is Lisa Bubari God bless you and may the universal light surround you until next week bye bye Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.